a right, hundred times out of a hundred, an amateur player will look for an easy shot and then shoot it and try to figure out what to do with the rest of the rack or the next two or three balls. And this is where they're already getting in big trouble. So we're after the break, and the first thing you want to look for is any clustered balls. Any balls touching each other or stuck to the rail. Um, they're just in a hard-to-get-to spot. And a lot of times, it's the eight ball. And still, the amateur player will, you know, run the rack and get to the eight ball and then and find themselves in trouble. And all they've done is is do a favor for their opponent who now has all the balls out of his way and it's an easy run out for him. If he's an advanced player, you're going to get beat every single time. So if we look at this rack without the straight balls on it, it seems like a legitimate easy out. As soon as we put the stripes back on it, we can see we have all kinds of problems with the solid balls and it's not a good choice. So the problem there was we weren't, we were looking for clusters, we were looking for balls tied up on the rails, but we weren't looking for balls blocking the pocket. Like this, I guess it's the 13 ball and this 10 ball. Now, it, it certainly is possible to run the solid balls, but there's problems. Uh, after we make this two, we're probably going to shoot three. Um, how, we, how are we going to get on the seven? And the, the ten ball is blocking the five for this side, so we're going to have to shoot the five in the corner. Um, this one does go by the thirteen, but if we don't shoot it perfect, uh, we're going to screw everything up. And this four ball is the biggest problem of all. We'd have to shoot the six first. And the best thing to do would be to come around three rails and get back behind here to shoot this four in the corner. It all just seems like too much work. Um, because it is too much work. So let's forget the solids and take a look at the stripes. So depending on the level of play of the pool player, they'll take a look at the stripes and decide they're too hard to. So they'll stick with the solids because at least they have a shot. See, the problem with this rack is we don't have a clear, easy shot on the stripes. Everything is blocked. Or just the cue balls just in the wrong position to make any one of these striped balls. So then, yeah, they'll go back to the solids. They'll commit to the solids. And then they'll try their best to run out. And they'll screw up and they'll leave the game back into their opponent's hand. A third strategy here is to commit to the easy first shot. But actually what you're doing is you're committing your opponent to the stripes so now your strategy would be to eliminate every single shot on the table by hitting another solid ball and tying up the cue ball so he can't make a stripe then the game shifts back to you and now you can run out the solids so before doing that you're looking for the biggest problem with uh, with your solids so you're going to commit and make make the two ball and now you need to get that four ball out of the, the way and down here somewhere while getting safe with the cue ball. That calls for a whole different strategy that I'll get into in a later video but for now instead of switching back to the solids when you decide the stripes are too hard too let's take a better look at the stripes. We do have a shot here but it's a combination the good part is it's an easy combination with the 15 going into the 10. So for a whole lot of reasons I decided to go for the stripes because once I make this 15-10 combination this game is over. It's just a matter of going through the motions. I've already decided how I'm going to do it and it's easy enough and this combination is easy enough and once I make it the whole table opens up. And, and everything's just right into to the pocket except for this uh, 11 ball. The only problem we have is getting back to this 11. <clears throat> so let's make the combination and, and the 15 ball is going to stay in front of the pocket. The cue ball is going to be a little 
to the right of where this 15 is. That's going to let us get on the 12. We can draw back, shoot the, shoot the 9 in this corner here, and roll up on this problem ball, which is the 11. As long as we have an angle, we can get back to center of the table, shoot the 14. In this corner, shoot the 13 straight into the side and use that to get on the 8, probably for a shot in this corner. That's it. It's simple enough. It's all about committing and going through the motions at this point. All right, here we are again. Now we're getting into eight ball strategy. It's a little complicated here. It's a six pack. That's my cat. You want to say hi? You said hi. How you guys doing tonight? I'm using my pea shower here. I used to play with a pea shower. I didn't like the grip. It was Irish linen. And I had a metal joint, so it hit too hard. I'm really, really, really picky when it comes to pool cues. As most pool players are. Um... You know that we decided to go with the stripes, and you know the plan, right? We're going to make this combination, 15 into the 10. And we're going to bounce out and draw back a little bit off the, uh, what is it, the 12. And this 9 ball does go by uh, the corner pocket, so we're going to roll down for a shot on this 11. Bounce out to the center table, shoot the 14, shoot the 13 on this side, and be straight on the eight. That's the plan. But you know, plans often fail. But you have to start with a plan. You have to win the game before you shoot that first ball. You have to have it you you have to have a reason for shooting that first ball. And it's because you're here to win. Otherwise you might as well go home. You're here to win, right? You don't win. And plan the whole table. And if you're not used to planning the whole table, including the eight, then get used to it. Practice it. Um, it'll, you'll get faster at it. And you won't have to tie anybody up. And you'll be able to fit, you'll be able to see the pattern in, in like three seconds. So don't worry about that. And you might be slow at first if you're not used to doing it. But your brain will get used to doing it. I promise. Let's turn the volume down. Otherwise, we'll get all kinds of crazy noises. Alright, so here's the combination. We have to roll up lightly because we want to keep... We don't want the 15 to get away from us. We just want to keep it in front of the side just like that. The problem here is I got straight in on it. It's actually not straight into the pocket, but it's straight into that tip. Um, for lack of a better word. So if the cue ball goes into the tip and I shoot it hard enough to bounce off the rail to get straight in on the 12, by lack of you're wrong, it could spit back out at me. So I'm just going to have to roll this one up too. And you see it hit the tip right there. And it just didn't bounce up far enough. You know, it's still in my head, this plan, so I'm about to get down and shoot this 12 until I realize i got to jack up too high, and I don't want to jack up on this ball. This is how you miss balls. So, yeah, I'm on the route. So, I guess I'm getting ready to get down, and then I say, no, not a good idea. So now I'm going to shoot the common. The, the plan changed, but you can't just change the first shot of the new plan. You have to you have to go through the remainder of the balls and remake a whole new strategy. The good thing is now all the balls are open, so I have all kinds of options. It was all in that first key shot there, yeah, making that combination. And once once that was done. I'm convinced that this is over, and I, I'm pretty much telling the announcers, look, I don't want to go through this, but I have to go through this, there ain't nothing to it. Which is really kind of cocky, but that's kind of the attitude you have to have in your head. It's not over until you make the eight ball. Um, 
But that's what I'm thinking. It's like, do I really have to go through this? That's pretty damn arrogant, isn't it? Pretty damn arrogant. Show me a man without confidence and I'll show you a loser. Actually, yeah, show me a man without an ego and I'll show you a loser. I'm not going to tell you who said that. But it's pretty much true. And you can have an ego without being a dick. You can have confidence without being a dick. There's a line there, and you have to you have to be cool. Don't don't go around treating people badly. Cool has enough of that. So anyway, I'm I'm shooting another combination, and I'm like, well, if I can't shoot this twelve, let's get this nine ball out of the way because I'm I'm not ready to shoot this eleven because, I mean, I could I, I have a path for it, but I, I don't like it. It's a it's too thin of a cut. It's too far away. And uh, too much can go wrong there. So let's shoot this 9-13 combination. And now let's just leave the 9 in front of the side pocket. And now let's go back to the 12. Um, and let's just roll behind the 14 when we shoot the 12. That's a natural angle. And we'll shoot the 14 into the side and try to get straight in on it. <coughs> and use... The nine ball to get back down on the eleven to bounce out for the eight. That's the new plan, and the new plan. And this is what you're doing in playing eight ball. Um, you're you're constantly replanning your strategy. The object is to give yourself options. Comprende, but to pick one and stick with it until. You get a bit of, you know, out of line or whatever. So we're coming up behind. We're trying to get straight in on the 14. We hit it too hard. And now we have a problem. Um, we can't shoot the 14 down in the corner, of course, because um, we have two balls blocking it. The 5 and the 7 are blocking. Um, I, don't, I, I don't have the right angle on this 9 to get back. To the set or to the eleven ball, and I can't draw it back to get the right angle on the fourteen to go down on the eleven. So what do you do here? Now we're we're replanning the whole thing again. We only have three balls left plus the eight ball, so it shouldn't be too hard to figure out. You have three balls to shoot at. Which one do you want to shoot first, second, third? Um. And the best way I decide to do it is to keep that plan of shooting that 14 in the side, but just forgetting about the 9 for a little while. That'll force the cue ball over to this rail and bounce out for a shot on the 11. And hopefully we'll have the right angle to get back on the 9. The problem is we don't. We're straight in. Once again, we're, we're replanning our strategy, and this time we have to draw back in behind this 7 and hope to get, not hope, we're really trying to get far out enough to make this 9 ball and then go to rails for a shot on the 8 in the side. So, hey, I don't like how I drew that. I, it's one of the reasons I didn't like that stick. I couldn't, I couldn't shoot my marquee shot with. I mean, I could, but it was not as good as I could with other sticks. I needed that soft joint, and I could, I can't stand Irish linen. So just like that, that time that plan worked fine, but I went too long on the eight, and now I'm really struggling. I've got a really tough shot on this nine ball or this eight ball. Um, it's a thin cut, and I get down on it wrong twice, so I have to stand back up and relook at it three times actually. Yeah, you never shoot a ball until you're feeling good on it, and everything's right, and everything looks right, and and you're able to take a deep breath and and say, okay, just shoot it, jump. 
or whatever your name is. Thank you guys for tuning in. We covered a lot there. Now we're getting in the eight ball strategy. Um, but that's the basics of it, and that's that's what we're doing. And when we're playing eight ball, we're always things are always coming up, and there's always balls clustering up, and how are we gonna break them out? And and never just slam at a like make make your object ball and slam at a, cust a cluster without at least having an idea of where that cue ball is going and where every ball in the cluster is going. Um, it may have worked for you in the past to just smack clusters wide open and hope for the best, but this game's not about hoping, and you'll never see a pro do that. Um, even if they're wrong, they at least think that they know where every ball is going, including the cue, especially the cue ball. Anyway, um, that comes up in another topic in, in a video coming up. Um, breaking out clusters in 8-ball is totally different than breaking out clusters in 9-ball. And you know if you've played a lot of 8-ball, or just a little 8-ball, the clusters are always, 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 always coming up. Um, so you have, to, you have to be good at breaking them out if you want to be a good 8-ball player. That's my preaching session is over. You want to say goodbye? Six pack, peeps, the peeps, they're waiting for you, say goodbye. Okay, he's drunk, no he's not really drunk, he's just tired, he was out chasing mice all night. Peace, thank you.